Hey guys, it has been a while since my Whispering Eyes Trapper build. I was basically taking a vacation from meme builds, but now I'm back with another dose of memes. This is gonna be a multi-purpose video. First, I'm gonna quickly talk about Crit, Reign of Arrow that I have that I haven't done video about. Then, Cast and Crit, Flicker Strike, Cosprey's Malice build. And then lastly, what I'm gonna be converting that uh, Flicker Strike build into. As always, timestamps, blah blah blah, timestamp. Timestamps will be in the description. I'm just <laughs> gonna leave this blooper so you know what I'm dealing every time I'm recording a video. So onto Reign of Arrow builds and I'm just gonna very quickly talk about it. And smash a bunch of clips into a very short uh, amount of time. So I didn't do a build around Reign of Arrow because it was too normal. So Reign of Arrow is kind of awkward, weird. I like it and hate it at the same time. It has mega AoE, even with conk effect. Its AoE scales with AoE, it also scales with extra arrows. But despite having such a massive AoE, it can still deal very, very nice damage against single target. However, it is, it seems like based on luck. Like in this example, this gun just melted in couple hits. Or should I say in couple attacks, because one attack can hit multiple times. If the arrow strikes the right uh, location. Also, bosses seem to have bigger hitbox, so it is easier to hit multiple times. But normal enemies, even the rares and tougher ones, don't have bigger hitbox, so when you try to kill them it feels feels much harder to kill those rares than the bosses and that's probably all about rain of arrows i don't really want to talk about it because it's just i don't know too normal or probably not for my style now onto the better build which is low damage flicker strike cast on crit cosprey's malice meme build in fever this build was supposed to be cool but uh it was kind of annoying it had a lot of issues you know what, maybe let's start with the leveling part. And I have an interesting discovery. I'm pretty sure no one has ever found this item before. This item is called Bright Beak. And it is indeed bright. So I discovered that you could use Leaf Slam with this on basically any build. And use something like Blade Vortex inside Tabla. And just Leaf Slam like crazy through enemies, melting them away. This method probably allowed me to cut my leveling time by 4 hours. And I usually count uh, when I reach level 80. Usually I reach level 80 at around 23 hours of playtime. But this one uh, reached before 20 hours. So in the future I will be using this method to level most of my builds. So once I reached level 68 I switched to Cosprey's Malice and started using Cast and Crit setup. And Cosprey's Malice is basically a cold version of Mjolnir except you also need to crit. So on the build you need to get accuracy, attack speed, you need to get attack crit, then you need to scale your spells, usually with crits. And then you need to get power charges, frenzy charges, life or maybe mana, other defensive layers, leech. So it is usually pretty complicated to get all the things that you need for such build. And there are many different approaches. But I chose to be Trickster. Trickster has Weave the Arcane, which makes your movement skills cost no mana. And Flicker Strike is movement skill. Also Trickster has pretty good attack speed. Next issue is Frenzy Charges. While Trickster has Frenzy Charge and Power Charge Generation on kill, but against single target that's not gonna be enough. So for that I am using the Red Trail Boots and the Golden Rule. And also Void Heart Ring. Basically Boots allow me to generate Frenzy Charge each time I hit an enemy if I am bleeding. And the jewel reflects bleeds I inflict on myself. While the ring allows me to have enough uh, chance to bleed. And also gives me a tiny bit of physical damage. Because Cosprey's Malice does not have any physical damage. And I do need to deal physical damage to cause bleed. As for power charge generation, that's simple. Just use power charge on crit. Accuracy and attack speed is not gonna be a problem. So the next thing we need to worry about is life. And it is pretty hard to get a big life pool when you're starting from the shadow area. So I decided to try and go mind over matter. Now if you look back at weave the arcane node, you'll see that I have 20% chance to recover 10% of my maximum mana when I use a skill. And I'm not using any mana to use flicker strike. So while taking damage I will be losing mana, but I will also be uh, recovering mana very frequently. So this synergizes pretty well. And this allows me to have pretty decent life pool. Also I do have some leech and while mapping I do recover a percentage life on kill. So while mapping it usually feels pretty safe 
until I just straight up get one shotted. As you know, flicker strike is basically an autopilot. Or as someone said, in Soviet Russia, you don't play flicker strike. Flicker strike plays you. Unfortunately, you may end up in the hole full of bearers on the traps. Also, from time to time, you may start teleporting through walls or getting desynced. Also, I think to play this build, you may need to upgrade your balls. Remember at the start I said that this build kind of doesn't have damage? Because it has quite a lot of conditions to get full damage. And unfortunately without a lot of investment, well not really a lot, but without proper investment and without a high level, you won't be able to get all the damage. So currently I reached level 83, but I would need level 90 to get full, full benefits of this. And until then it just doesn't have all the right tools. Oh, the rest of my items, I am also using Essence Worm. Remember, I am Mind Over Matter, so I cannot reserve my mana. And I am using Anger Aura, because Anger fits any spell. Not just, uh, not just Cold, not just Lighting, not just Physical. And I was experimenting with my spell setup. Initially, I wanted to use Blade Vortex and Vortex. Vortex is obviously in the Cosplay Smellers, but I was also swapping to Glacial Cascade from time to time. But it just doesn't look as cool as Vortex. And we are all about the cool factor in here. Now, the Blade Vortex is the tricky part. Cast on crit has a 0.5 second cooldown. Blade Vortex can stack up to 10 stacks. And by default, it lasts 5 seconds. So in theory, you should be able to stack 10 stacks, but you don't have 100% crit chance. And don't have 100% hit chance. I am not using Glicosada shield, I am using Undying Flame shield. With the shield, when you crit, you drop meter and it has 3 second cooldown. So I just wanted to play with that shield for some extra memes. And that kind of means that it's pretty difficult to stack 10 stacks of Blade Vortex. The highest stacks I ever saw was 7, but it quickly dropped to 6 against single target. And I don't really have increased skill effect duration from the passive skill tree. So I had to craft a belt with increased cooldown recovery speed. And I am also using efficacy, which also increases the skill effect duration. You could use increased skill effect duration support gem, but it doesn't give any damage. And it was pretty goddamn difficult to get free green socket which are of colors on my body armor. So with the increased cooldown recovery speed belt and efficacy, now, now I can sometimes see 9 stacks. Uh, still, still need more investment. And I cannot really reach skill effect duration nodes on the passive skill tree. But with couple more levels and another jewel socket, I could use a unique jewel which increases skill effect duration. Which kind of feels like a waste. But yeah. Now quickly about my skills and links. You kind of need a 6 link. So I am using this shitty body armor. It simply has a lot of life and a tiny bit of resistances. By the way, resistances are another problem for this. So inside body armor, flicker strike is linked with cast on critical strikes, increased critical strikes, power charge on critical, efficacy and val blade vortex. And I am using Val Blade Vortex because I can simply use it to help me with the single target. Like in this Elder Fight, which is by the way tier 7. And I did try three times before I can finally do it. So yeah, that's how much this build sucks, so you better don't do it, let me suffer. It's funny, but it seems like the game has hidden mechanic. The more you suffer the shitter build you play, the more lucky you get. Like this Elder Fight was just so horrible for me, but I, I was rewarded with the Shimmeron one, which I sold for 2.2x. See, you don't even need good build and you don't need to run burial chambers to make currency. Just play what you want and the universe will reward you. Eventually, maybe. Hmm, that doesn't happen with people. If you want, you could also swap Blade Vortex with uh, Blade Fall. Or maybe even Ethereal Knives, but you would need the uh, Threshold Jewel for that. Or if you change the color, you can use any blue spell like... I was also trying Shock Nova, or maybe Ice Nova. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. What about Cold Snap? No, Cold Snap does not bypass the cooldown if it is being triggered and not cast manually. So Cold Snap cooldown would not be bypassed by cast while channeling, cast when damage taken, cast on stun, cast on crit, Cosprey's Malice, Poet Spin or any other triggers that are not manually casting. And inside Cosprey's Malice I am using currently Glacial Cascade with Hypothermia and Conk Effect. But I usually use Vortex instead of Glacial Cascade. And the uh, reduced AoE from Vortex is not that big of a deal because you are flicker striking all the time and you are basically triggering your skills on top of enemies. And also Vortex does leave a chill ground which deals some cold damage over time but it also chills enemies so Hypothermia is always active. Now for my defensive layers I do have coupled cast and damage taken setups. 
One is the usual Casman damage taken with Immortal Call increased duration and I am also using Wallace Marco because I kind of do need leech still. Then another Casman damage taken with Cold Snap and Frost Wall. Cold Snap is not required but I do like having it because it allows me to chill enemies that hit me from far away before I reach them. And Frost Wall is just another defensive, uh, well, mechanical defensive layer. And I can easily go through my own Frost Wall with Willing Blades. Willing Blades by the way is linked with faster attacks, Fortify. And for the passive skill tree I will link it in the uh, video description but quickly over ascendancy choices. I first took Weave the Arcane, then I went for the Patient Reaper, then Swift Killer and then from Overlap I harnessed the Void for more damage. And on to the final chapter of this video. You can rework this build into normal Cosplay Smiles build and by normal I mean not using Flicker Strike but then again since I already chose Trickster and mind over matter, I kind of need to use some movement ability and I can already see you thinking, it must be a charge dash. No, charge dash is bad, it hits only once per pulse at least and it is very clunky to use. Why not use cyclone? So I'm gonna be converting this build into cyclone, I will drop those boots, I will change the ring, change the jewel, I will try to get another in uh, cooldown recovery speed mod on boots, get better ring and jewel and use frenzy skill to actually maintain my frenzy charges against bosses. Because while mapping I don't need that, I, I can just maintain them on kill. And I did a very quick test with that and it feels so much smoother, so much better and it doesn't give you seizures. Well flicker strike doesn't give me seizures but yeah flicker strike is kind of annoying and highly unpredictable. So I will give this build another one maybe two days and try Elder again, maybe even try Shaper's Gardens if it's going well enough and then most likely do another video. Oh, I just remembered, I am actually not using multi strike for flicker strike. I was at the start but why? I can maintain my frenzy charges, I cannot trigger more skills even if I attack more. And instead of multi strike, I can just use another support gem to boost my blade vortex damage. And also, weave the arcane recovers mana only per attack, not per hit, so multi strike doesn't even benefit weave the arcane. And I think that's about all. Thank you for watching and see you soon.